in today's basics review, we're going to look at the semicolon. Semicolon for some people could be an intimidating punctuation mark because they're just not quite sure how to use it. And it is very easy if you use it incorrectly to, to create like fragments and grammatically incorrect sentences. So we want to review what situations do we want to use the semicolon? When does it uh, come in handy and when should we avoid it? So we're going to go over kind of a couple rules or when you would use the semicolon. And so let's look at the first one right here. So number one, right, is it, a semicolon can connect two or more complete sentences, connects them together, uh, especially when they are closely related in thought, right? You're, you're wanting to give an equal weight or emphasis to both ideas, but it can also help you kind of logically lead a reader in your thought process as well. So it helps kind of continue the thought because it connects two complete sentences together. Now, when do we want to avoid then using the semicolon? So we want to avoid connecting sentences that transition in thought. You know, if you're moving from one subject to another or you use uh, uh, a contradictory word and maybe you're transitioning to another part of your uh, thought process or argument, you don't want to use a semicolon. Also, uh, if ideas are not related at all and it would just kind of be random to connect them together. So if you said something like, science is one of the most challenging classes I have. I think I prefer vanilla over chocolate. Those don't connect at all. You wouldn't connect them with the semicolon. So let's look at an example. So here's our example. Trying my best has always been a priority. Semicolon. So we have a complete sentence before the semicolon. After the semicolon. If I fail, at least I know I tried. Again, a complete sentence after the semicolon. Do notice, though, that there is not a capital I uh, after the semicolon. You don't capitalize a sentence after the semicolon unless it's a proper noun and then in that case you of course would. So I've taken two complete sentences that are closely related and I've made them into one sentence using the semicolon. That's the first one. So number two, a semicolon connects two or more closely related again complete sentences when the second begins with a conjunctive adverb. So that's one of those grammar terms that you think, what's a conjunctive adverb? But once we look at a couple of examples, you actually already know what a conjunctive adverb is. So let's take a look. All right, so therefore, thus, however, consequently, besides, meanwhile, moreover, there's a lot more. All you have to do is Google examples of conjunctive adverbs. But now you know what the, you, you know you know what they are. You've seen these before. So how do these look in examples or in sentences that you might actually create? Here's the example. She had told me to meet her at six o'clock tonight, semicolon. So complete sentence, semicolon, conjunctive adverb, however, since she had to work late, we had to reschedule. Now, that conjunctive adverb does not have to be there, right? I could simply say, she had told me to meet her at six o'clock tonight, since she had to work late, we had to reschedule. Those are two complete sentences connected together with a semicolon, but the conjunctive adverb there is kind of a connective thought, right? It, it kind of brings the two together. Uh, like in other words, it's like a, this happened, therefore, or however, and so this is what, what occurred after that. So that conjunctive adverb is another way that the semicolon can bring two sentences together. So this is kind of an important uh, point here. The coordinating conjunction is different than a conjunctive adverb, right? So if you're using one of the fanboys between two complete sentences, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, or so, if you have a, a complete sentence, a coordinating conjunction, and a complete sentence, then you use a comma to make it grammatically correct. So you have a complete sentence, a conjunctive adverb, and a complete sentence, you use a semicolon. That's kind of an important distinction. One is grammatically correct, the other is not. The third rule is that semicolon can reduce confusion in sentences that already have a lot of commas going in it already. So one idea would be, 
If you have a, a compound or a complex or a compound complex sentence, which I reviewed in, in videos, um, those already could have a lot of commas in there. And so the semicolon not only connects multiple sentences right, but if there's a lot of commas happening, then you can include a semicolon. Let's look at an example. You can see in this example, since I had to work the next morning, I left the birthday party early, but considering I wasn't having much fun, I was glad for the excuse to leave knowing I wouldn't miss much. So there are four commas in there already. The semicolon is in place of a comma because after the semicolon is the word but there, which is a coordinating conjunction. So this is the exception. Because I have so many commas uh, already, I use the semicolon instead to separate those different complete sentences. And then the coordinating conjunction is still okay because I'm trying to avoid confusion and just comma after comma after comma. So that is one way a semicolon helps reduce confusion when there's a lot of commas in a sentence. The second way is when you have a list of items that have additional commas going on already. So this gets a little more technical and complicated and you really have to be careful and pay attention to what you're doing in, in order for this to work. Let's take a look. All right, so you can see by looking at this sentence, uh, if I didn't put semicolons in here, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six commas, but I used the semicolon to separate this list of items because I gave a little description of each item. So for our trip to the desert, I brought my tent in case I didn't want to sleep in the RV, semicolon instead of a comma, a gas can, comma, as we always seem to run out, semicolon instead of the comma, and then my camera, comma, in order to take pictures of the stars at night. So those commas are used in this case to add on a description to something that I'm bringing in this list. And then the semicolon makes the distinction between the items in the list. So that's another way to do it. So the next question is, why? As a student or a writer, why would I want to use a semicolon? So for one, as a writer, your responsibility is always to your reader. So a semicolon connecting complete sentences together, it does add a layer of sophistication and depth to what you're saying. It helps the reader see that as a writer, you are able to go beyond just a simple, you know, rudimentary, basic, simple sentence, simple sentence, simple sentence. It shows a depth of thought and a depth of structure. So that's one reason. And then also, right, it helps me as a writer link my ideas together. So in one sentence, which, you know, technically it's two or more sentences, but I've linked them together with the semicolon. So in one sentence, I'm allowed this deeper exploration of my thoughts and ideas. And I have this kind of smoother, more connected flow to my narrative without the finality of a period, because a period just kind of ends the thought and then it moves on to the next one. The semicolon allows the thought to continue. So it's really a, a great device, especially when you're developing an analysis of something you're talking about. So when I'm writing analysis or commentary, for example, right, I can link together two sentences that develop the idea that I'm exploring. And then I can do a follow up sentence that maybe evaluates or draws conclusions to the argument that I've laid out already. I wanted to look at a student example of how you would edit some an analysis into one sentence that would then allow you to explore a little more deeply or address a counter uh, claim maybe in the follow-up sentence. So let's take a look at a student example. So here's a student example, actual student writing that we're going to revise starting with the semicolon and talk about some strategies to make this better. So here's the, the, what we're starting with. With less people getting vaccinated, they are contracting unwanted diseases. This has brought back eradicated diseases like mumps. So let's just go in first and we're going to start making this one sentence. All right, so that alone allows a little bit more depth to it. So let's go through this uh, word by word with less people. Less is like it rained less today. Um, I want less water in the glass, unspecific. The word fewer is when we can actually count. So there are statistics about how many uh, how many people are getting vaccinated versus how many are opting out. 
So we're going to say fewer there. With fewer people getting vaccinated, they. Um, they is kind of vague as to who we're talking about. So we're going to just say um, a larger portion of the population is contracting unwanted disease. Okay, So this has brought back eradicated diseases like mumps. So let's just start with here. Eradicated diseases like mumps have made a resurgence. So you can see I haven't changed any of the actual original thoughts of this student, but with the semicolon, I've connected them together and then I can go through and just make a few minor tweaks and it sounds already more sophisticated and more thoughtful. So now here's what we end up with. With fewer people getting vaccinated, a larger portion of the population is contracting unwanted disease. This erad eradicated diseases like mumps have made a resurgence. So I've kind of just added another layer to the thought there. So that's how a semicolon is a great starting point. And now I can move on in, in this analysis and uh, maybe address a counterclaim, maybe draw some conclusions, give suggestions, that kind of thing. So this has been a review of the semicolon. Hopefully you have a better understanding as to why it's important and when you want to use it, how to do so so that your writing is still grammatically correct. Until next time. Hey, thanks for watching this video. It would be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel. Here are some other videos in the writing workshop playlist where it can help you become a better writer, uh, how to write essays and other things that, that I've explored with you. And then of course, some additional playlists just to check out for funsies. We'll see you soon.